Hey, hey, here we go. We're going to kick off your Labor Day weekend in a very positive way. It is Garden America. Thank you for joining us, those that tune in right away, right off the bat. We are so pleased to have you. We hope you had a good week, and your weekend is everything you want it to be. A lot of people have three days off. Uh, some people don't. Some people have more than three days off, Tiger. So wh- whatever the case may be, wait, welcome to the show. Who? Wait a minute. There's people that have the three days off, and then yes. there's people that have more than three days? Because I don't even get the three days. Well, some people don't work anymore. Oh, oh, if you're okay. retired, yeah, it's just, just another day. See, I'm the reverse. We don't take days off. The only, the only days off we take are um, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. Are you talking about your family? Yeah, as far as work goes. Okay. So the nursery's open. Right. The landscape maintenance is doing work, all that kind of stuff. So I forget about holidays. No, I, I get you. You know, when I was early days of radio, there were no real days off if you had an air shift. Yeah. You, you did it unless you wanted some time off, but you had to be there. Like a lot of people in this building are going to be working on Monday. Yeah. So I, I get that. But th- those <laughs> that, like, I've got. Take the day off or they're retired. That's I'm amazing. excited to have Monday <laughs> off. And as far as taking the day off, let me introduce to you the act you've known for all these years, <laughs> John Begnasco. Hey, didn't we go about, uh, it was five years, 10 years working seven days a week? Oh, yeah. I think it was longer than that. We, was we, it? Had, a, we had shows on Saturday and Sunday. Right. Yeah, two hours every weekend. Wow. Today's really not a day off for me either because, because it's going to be 100 degrees in Fallbrook. And that means water, water, water. Yeah, it's exhausting. It's just just watering is exhausting, right? Right. We did have <laughs> rain last week, though, and, and uh, you were asking. I think you said as you were driving through, you had to. Substantial. Right. Uh, now that I think of it. We had enough rain that it was easy to pull weeds. <laughs> oh, nice! No. So I Soil pulled a lot saturation. of weeds. I right. pulled I pulled something out of the uh, the uh, sim salabim. your back. You always <laughs> pull your back. I do. I pulled something out of the sim salabim pot yesterday. Now I had seen this growing, and I thought that's not part of the rose, is it? it had little flowers at the end. I thought, well, oh, this is <laughs> let's nice. See, let's see what this turns into. And then and then yesterday I walked by and I went, no, get out. And I I pulled it out, and it came out very easily because of how wet everything is but you know bird probably dropped a seed or something but it didn't look like a weed it looked like it flowers it might yeah. might turn I into mean, something you know a lot of weeds are actually very pretty right weeds are plants I mean, what did bruce call them just misunderstood plants uh, bruce he had used to say it was a, a plant out of place out of place yeah. yeah yeah so i mean that john talks about carapia you know the ground cover right replacing it in lawns it's like that's that's a weed <laughs> like you know. What was that grass we used to tout years ago on for the roof? Australian, for the roof. What, you could put it on the roof of, of your Carex Panza. Your your uh, thatched roof, not thatched roofs, no. but people were growing them like ground cover. They were long. It was long. You didn't have to mow it. Australian something. Does that make? Does that ring a bell? No. Are you talking about buffalo grass? Maybe. Maybe that was. I it. think it was buffalo As grass. Like a lawn replacement, or you grow it on your roof? Well, you could. You could grow it anywhere, but it, it was to replace lawns. But it, it, you it let was it a grow. drought tolerant grass because it's a native prairie grass. That's it. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it uh, you could let it go without cutting if you right. wanted to. Right. Right. But you could grow. People were growing it like everywhere, not just right. for a lawn. Yeah. They could use it as a as a filler, or um, have like, you ever have you ever laid in a meadow? Have you ever? Now, hold like, on. You know, <laughs> you know how you see these movies in these pictures of people laying in plush grass meadows. Have, have you, you ever have, done it? I don't think I have. Let me ask you, have you ever taken a long walk on the beach? Yes, I have. <laughs> have you? Yeah. It's a lot more relaxing than laying in a meadow, I'll yeah. tell you. I well, I was going to say, You've laying got... in a meadow is not a no. pleasurable experience. Okay, first of all, where is there a meadow around here? Great question. And But it definitely is. I've done it before. The ones in Escondido it, are hidden. Yeah. <laughs> It's and good. it lasts about four minutes before you start getting itchy, ants scratchy, and right. scratchy, and flies and bugs Dirt. flying around. And yeah, yeah. meadows, earwigs, earwigs, sow bugs. <laughs> and then you never know. I mean, there could be a snake or other. Oh, creature speaking as well. of snakes, I went to. I told you how easy it was to pull weeds. I'm pulling weeds, and I <laughs> uh, came a across a rattlesnake. Ooh. Rattle? Yeah, big one. I hope Little it was one? a bigger one, not a baby. <sighs> it was a teenager, I think. So did you? Did you startle it? Um, I don't know if I startled it because it didn't attack. Did it, ra- it was rattling though, right? Uh, I wasn't rattling. So he wasn't upset. No, he was all coiled up though. Ooh, that's scary. He was ready to get upset. Yeah. But 
I don't know where it went because I was going in the opposite direction. So when I went back, I couldn't find it. I always keep my eye on a snake until I know where it's gone to yeah. or I moved it. Because, yeah, once once there's that idea that you don't know where it's at anymore, but you still know it's around. Well, the rattle's good because that's just him saying, look, don't mess yeah. with me. I'm here. I, I had thought of killing it, but I was uh, torn. You know, I was thinking, you know, God. Gophers. What's worse? Yeah, gophers or a rattlesnake? Yeah. You yeah. know, I can watch out for the rattlesnake, but uh, you got time to get to the hospital before you get it. Have you now, have you seen many rattlesnakes since you've been up on that property? I think uh, three. In how uh, many years? Five years? Four years? No, no, we've yeah. only been there for three years. It just yeah. seems longer with the house being built and taking <laughs> yeah, so long. Well, it took two years. Twenty to years. Like a decade. You've been there you've been for twenty years. Talking right, about John? this. <laughs> but uh, when we first started grading the property, there was one really big one. Oh, and I'm sure, but, too, it was land at that time. There was probably a lot of snakes. Right. And then you started disturbing. Right. <laughs> so uh, I told you about the scorpion we saw in the bathroom when we first moved in, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And I uh, haven't seen any more scorpions. So I don't know. Anyway, I let the... Uh, my hatred of gophers went out over my disgust with the Probably not a bad idea. Snakes yeah. are good. Snakes get rid of all the, like you said. Well, any other snake, yeah, for sure. Gopher yeah. snake. Gopher, Gardner. Yeah, gopher snakes are right. great. King snakes. King snakes eat rattlesnakes. Did you know yeah. that? Yeah. You know, no, I'm saying of, they're good snakes. A lot yeah. of snakes. Rattlesnake is probably the worst out of all of those. But a lot right? of snakes yeah, eat other snakes. That That's not rare. Really? Yeah, there's, in fact... Um, I watched this guy on YouTube who uh, raises, you know, venomous reptiles and stuff, and he feeds, like, every two weeks. He'll feed his king cobras, uh, like, a python, small pythons and stuff. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's very common for snakes to eat other snakes. Crazy. Huh? We can do a whole Cannibals. show on that if you'd like. Cannibals. Absolutely. Right? Isn't it weird when animals or things eat Their themselves? own species? Yes. Yeah, well. Yeah, yeah Kim says the... on. Uh, on a line that the weeds are so high right now that they've got to uh, be careful. Yeah. Because the snakes are hiding in the you weeds. Wear those boots or those leggings, you know, when you're walking around. Because you just never know. Yeah. Look wear down. the boot, tuck your pants into your boots, bring the boots up high. Yep. Did I tell you uh, about the owl owls that ate our chickens? This sounds familiar. Did he? Yes. Oh, yes. Wait, was this... Yeah, two are gone now, two roosters. Was this the story about what are we going to do, either kill them or let them run loose? Right, so they let three of the roosters run loose. It was uh, the gang of three. And it's now the, the sole survivor. Down to one. <laughs> well, you know, Al's one. nothing to mess with. Yeah, well, yeah, I didn't realize that they would kill a chicken, though. They, they can do, <laughs> they'll kill and attack, you know, varmints that you wouldn't think they would. They're, they're pretty voracious. Yeah. Well, I would think that since chickens aren't active at night, they wouldn't the, be a natural right. thing. But, but they hunt at night, and they can see very well at night. Yeah, now, the owls can. Yeah. Right, yeah. So, anyway, that's a pleasant thought. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, lots John. Of, lots of good critter control we're talking. We've got Melinda Myers coming up today oh, once again. can't wait. By popular demand. The cards yeah. and letters that, that we received. Regarding we're, Melinda, well, yes. We're still reading them. Exactly. We can't get through them all. We want to do John's quote of the week, which this week is definitely a quote. It's not a <laughs> yes, small it's, book. It's, it's a not, quote. Not one of John's essays. So let's get to uh, John's quote of the yeah, week and here. this quote's from Sir Walter Scott. I thought you were going to say Sir Walter Raleigh. <laughs> no, not Sir Walter okay. Ra Ra Raleigh, Sir Walter Scott. He said, unless a tree has born blossoms in the spring, you will vainly look for fruit on it in the autumn. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. We all get that. Yeah. The chicken or the egg, which came first. What else did he say, John? I think that was supposed to have more than just a fruit meaning to it. <laughs> Can apply to your <laughs> life. Oh, really? Right? Exactly. You oh, it went deeper? It. I thought he was <laughs> just giving us garden advice. It's like it's like Jesus in the Bible, the vine <laughs> sprouting forth. Right. It really? wasn't trying to teach what? you how to grow grapes. No? <laughs> John's Bible study. Hey, <laughs> let's talk quickly. Melinda Myers is here, back once again. Yeah, so uh, she's back to help us with the fall lawn care tips. You know, getting into the cooler time of year and some rain, how to manage your lawn, keep it green, keep the uh, weeds out. So we'll be talking uh, fall lawn care tips. I'm going to take notes because i got to plan a lawn. Do you? The, in the next month, yeah. Now, are Ooh. you going to go sod or seed? 
Oh, sod for sure. Yeah. Sod, get seated, that thing rolling. Sod. Yeah, Roll that out, right, John? Seed, seed, seed is like a high school boy trying to grow facial hair. It just comes in all do, patchy. Do you know that I did weird. that? Seeds, <laughs> seeds are weeds. Yeah, years ago in my home in Pacific Beach, yeah. I, I did the seeds. Oh, oh my gosh, hurry up. Yeah. Hurry up. And then one go. spot just doesn't even grow. Right. Like, it's all the I, – I water you the same, same seed. Why are you not growing? Never do that again. Okay, it is break time. How exciting. Uh, those on Biz Talk Radio, welcome. Uh, those on Facebook Live, questions, comments. We're going to return with Melinda Myers, segment number two coming up. Happy Labor Day weekend to you. Those on Biz Talk Radio, Labor Day was last weekend. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching Facebook Live. We're going to get a hold of Melinda Myers next here on Garden America. Stay with us. Back with your garden buddies here on Garden America as we celebrate uh, Labor Day weekend with one and all. Thank you for tuning in. Those on BizTalk Radio, thank you for listening to this pre-recorded broadcast. I think we got all the uh, business out of the way, gentlemen. Time to bring on the Melinda Myers, Tiger Palafox. Yes, we we'll have Get Melinda. down to business. <laughs> <laughs> get growing, right? Um, yeah, so this weekend we have Melinda Myers joining us to talk about the fall lawn care tips. Now, now, Melinda, did you get any of the um, storm weather that was uh, heading north ways um, this past week? No, we're pretty dry still in my neck of the woods, so I know a lot of my garden friends on the East Coast and anybody living there has really been struggling with all that flash flooding and all yeah. the excess water. It's been so spotty, right? This year has been... Well, I think gardeners say that every year. It's a crazy year for gardening, but <laughs> not, not according on either end. Not according to the almanac. It's always able to be predicted, and they know exactly what's going <laughs> to yeah. happen every year. Yeah, what so. time it's going to rain every day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so, so, so that um, weather missed you, and you're saying you're suffering from dry weather now, right? You bet. Um, around a lot of the Midwest, we've been uh, less than normal. It's been very spotty, but a lot of us are really under our normal rainfall. I was uh, doing an in-person appearance last week, and somebody said they've had two inches of rain this summer total, which I know I'm whining. I'm a Midwesterner. <laughs> we've done a little bit better in my yard, but it, it's so spotty. Just, you know, those storms pop up, and sometimes you benefit, and sometimes you don't. So, Everybody's facing some, you know, different challenges. I'm seeing a lot of lawns that are still fairly dormant, some dead patches due to the crazy weather, um, you know. So I think, we're, and we're seeing different kind of insects as related to that. Usually mm -hmm. for us, we yeah. don't see a lot of insect problems because our lawns usually receive sufficient moisture. And so it's, it's just a time that we're going to have to really help our lawns recover and get them ready for, you know, if you're lucky enough for the winter ahead where you have, you know, greener lawns for some people have, we have greener lawns in the winter, yours may be going dormant as things cool off a bit. So just kind of helping our lawns recover from the stress of whatever you were suffering this year. And up in the area where you live, do people install sprinkler systems for their lawns or no, it's pretty much reliant you know, on rain? You know what? At, when I started my career <clears throat> many years ago, I thought irrigation or landscapes in the Great Lakes area would never catch on, and they really have. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people have found the convenience, and if they're run po properly, as you know, you can actually do a better job conserving moisture because you can set your timers to water properly and at the right time, as opposed to a friend of mine who has an irrigation um, company calls it the brown and soak. You let your lawn go dormant, then you water, 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 bring it back, and then realize the water bill was too much. You let it go dormant. <laughs> yep. And 
you know, and that's worse on your lawn than just going, okay, I'm going to let it go dormant. And once nature returns with cooler, wetter weather, the lawn will recover and I'll deal with the consequences then. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know what? She's talking the, about, Melinda, no rain. I mean, welcome to San Diego. <laughs> I, know. I mean, we'd love I know. To. I always feel bad when yeah. I complain to you guys because I'm like, yeah, yeah. well, get a yeah. grip, Melinda. Two inches of rain would be half oh. our annual rainfall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the headlines would be Stormwatch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Um, so, you know, when it comes to the fall, you know, we're talking cooler temperatures. We're, we're talking some measurable precipitation, right, for lawns. Um, what are other things that people need to do during that time of year to keep their lawn healthy? You know, fertilization is probably the one thing. There's a lot of research out that shows um, fertilizing your lawn even once can really greatly reduce your weed problem. So if your lawn is healthy, it's going to be better able to compete with those weeds. Continue mowing as long as your grass is growing. And, of course, any of you that know me know Melorganite's my fertilizer of choice. It's low nitrogen, slow release. So, you know, if we do end up getting hot, dry weather after you fertilize around this weekend, it's a good time to think about fertilizing really about anywhere you live, then it won't hurt your lawn. And then it has 85% organic matter. So you're feeding your soil, which means a good foundation which allows your lawn and any plants to grow better. And then the other thing that research found, which I think is really exciting, is when the microorganisms work on releasing those nutrients from the melorganite, they release some of the phosphorus and potassium bound to the soil. And a lot of areas where people have been gardening for years, we see excessive levels. You know, all those years of 10, 10, 10, 20, 20, 20 fertilizing, the plants aren't using the nutrients in equal amounts. And so, um, especially if you have a high pH soil, it's bound to the soil. The plants can't get it. And so we just keep adding more. And this way it makes some of that available, which is great. So fertilization, mowing high and then continue to mow until your lawn, you know, the weather, the lawn stops growing. And irrigation You know, you have to decide how you're going to manage water. Obviously, for you guys, that's not much of a choice. If you want grass, you're going to have to water. Um, And for us, it's a matter of do we want to look at it and watch it go dormant. And then there are some other things you can do besides fertilization, too. You know, it's funny. I, I, you know, in the landscape industry, I get to see some things that, you know, not everybody gets to. Um, And when it comes to lawns, we, we remove you know, a significant amount of lawns for people and they're either are replacing their lawn or they're changing it to something different. And, you know, you talk about milorganite and you talk about what it does to the soil and the root systems of the plants. When we remove a lawn, we actually get to see that because I've seen weak lawns and, you know, you just pull up the grass and that's all it is. But when I remove a, a well taken care of lawn, you know, you can, you can see the root system going deeper. You can, you know, see the soils a little bit different. and It's tougher to take out. Yeah, it yeah. is. It is. And, you know, because people just kind of, you know, we, we talk about this stuff. We talk about, you know, the uh, mycorrhizae in the soil. We talk about feeding the soil. But people don't see that, huh, Melinda? It's got to be something you just kind of almost trust or have faith in that's happening underneath. But when we get to remove the lawn, we actually see it. You know, I always, when I was teaching horticulture at our technical college, I always told my students, you're a good salesperson if you can sell soil prep. <laughs> People will drag you back to see their cool new plant. They're not going to drag you back. Well, a few will. But <laughs> look at my great soil, right? The nerds. Look at that. Yeah. And, and, but that's what makes for a great garden, as you just described. But it's the things we don't see happening that really impact what we do see but it's hard to sell you know it's a hard thing to sell to people that you know investing in your soil is going to pay off and you won't maybe see it immediately like you do your new flowers or your new plants now now you got to you moved recently right wasn't it within the past five years well a little bit longer but yeah yeah if you look at my garden it doesn't maybe i'll say five years (laughs) Um, we're, we're gonna have to take a break but when we get back melinda where i was going through is you know, when you started your new garden, did you see the changes that you did with the soil prep and all of that that are now coming into effect? 
But we're uh, we're going to take a break. Yeah. When we get back, we'll keep chatting with Melinda Myers. That we will do. And again, now those on Biz Talk Radio, your break's going to be just a bit longer. Those on Facebook Live, it'll be a quick break. Noticing a question or two uh, coming up on Facebook Live. And again, uh, questions directly to uh, Melinda Myers. Of course, that is welcomed as well as we continue on this Labor Day weekend. So as Tiger mentioned, a uh, quick break here, Facebook Live a bit longer on Biz Talk Radio. Uh, today's guest, this weekend's guest, Melinda Myers from Malorganite here on Garden America. Back after these messages on Biz Talk Radio. All righty, back here on Garden America with Melinda Myers. We are talking about Malorga Night and uh, lawn care as we get into the winter months here. And uh, those on Facebook Live, uh, we've got the page open, so questions, comments, and we will handle that, Tiger. Yeah, before the break, I we were chatting, and we were talking about soil prep. And, you know, Melinda kind of has a, a relatively new garden, and I'm sure there were some things that she did when she started that to, you know, help improve the soil, like all the things we're talking about now. But before we get to that, Melinda, we did have a, a question kind of comment come across from one of our listeners that goes back to lawns. And um, they had mentioned that there are holes in the lawn, looks like some digging. Um, and, you know, when we first, you know, think of holes in the lawn digging, we're thinking raccoon or skunk, because those are usually going after grubs in the lawn. Um, and, she kind of is assuming the same thing. Is there any tips that you have for grubs in the lawns? You know, for a lot of the, the country, well, east of the Rockies, Japanese beetles are probably one of the biggest problems because they're so prolific once you have them. And they will chew on the roots of the plants. And then, like you said, the skunks and raccoons go after them. You can use, there are some products available to kill the grubs. My concern is there's so many good guys in the soil that I always make that a very last resort. If you do have a problem, um, depending on where you live, but usually it's about the middle of the summer when the adults are out feeding on the above ground plants, they're mating and they're starting to lay their eggs in the soil in your grassy areas, that's the time to treat. And always read and follow label directions, looking for something that's the least toxic, keeping in mind that the adult Japanese beetles can fly two miles. So even if you're treating your lawn, your neighbor's Japanese beetles may move in and feed on your plants and the process starts. There is a milky spore, which is an organic, but you need to wait. Um, it takes about three years for it to build up in the soil to kill the grubs. Um, You can't use insecticides or other fungicides on your lawn during that time. And then if you can convince your neighbors to do the same, then you expand that area of control. And that's one of the organic options that's available to control those grubs. So it's really, uh, you know, controlling the grubs because that's one of their favorite foods. And, um, you know, and I don't know if you have any other tips, Tiger, because I don't know if you see other grub issues in your neck of the woods that are causing these kind of problems. Yeah, definitely, you know, as you mentioned, you know, it's tough because if you go the organic, the, you know, the milky spore, the nematodes for grubs, but then you can't use the product right. that would kill grubs because that's going to kill everything else in the soil. And, you know, all of the products that are designed to kill grubs that I know of are, you know, not safe products to use in vegetable gardens or, or near edible plants and things. So, you, you know, you they're, you know, strictly to the lawn. Um I, th- I think, though, that beneficial nematodes are going to be quicker acting than milky spore. Okay. So if Linda wanted to use beneficial yeah. nematodes, I, I would think she would get immediate. And by immediate, I mean within three weeks of, of, of results. Uh, and, and, and it's funny right. because if you've never bought nematodes before, mm-hmm. it's really easy. You just The best way to do it is just order them online. Right. Because they ship them straight to your house in this refrigerated packet. It's a sponge. You soak it in water in like a watering can, and then you just go water you water your yard with it. Right, or put it in a hose and spray yeah. or something Yeah, like and that. again, it's like this thing based on faith because you can't see a nematode. <laughs> you don't know what's coming off of this sponge. It's just it's just there, <laughs> and, right. you know. And then, but but John mentioned you do see results. 
you know, kind of like decollet snails. Like yeah. you throw these decollet snails out in your yard and you're just like, all right, here and, they go. And there they go. And next thing you know, you see all these empty European shells, snail right. shells just all around your house. You're like, wow, decollet snails are working. Well, when it comes to gardening, based on what you're talking about and other things, faith. Yeah. It's all about faith. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't panic when you think of putting nematodes out in your yeah. yard because there are good nematodes and bad nematodes. Yeah. And, and I got a. I got a question for you too, John. Will they work on Jap? Do you know if they work on Japanese beetles? Are they work on any grubs? Or are they? You know, I, I'm not a hundred percent positive, but I believe they do. You know, fortunately, we don't have Japanese right. beetles, and I left Michigan when I heard they were coming. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I got out in plenty of time. But I would definitely check that out because that I'm would be a to. great alternative. And, you know, you were talking about malorganite or other organic materials. Uh, one of the things that they do is help build up the amount of nematobacters in the soil, which are bacteria that attack um, yeah. uh, bad nematodes. It's the good stuff. No, they attack the Yeah, they're the good yeah, things. Yeah, they're the good stuff. Yeah. Right, they yeah. attack bad nematodes. So you can do you can do spray good nematodes and then kill yeah. bad nematodes through the practices Melinda's telling us about. Yeah, and um, I just looked it up, and yes, they do kill Japanese beetles. Oh, all right. They are one of the ones listed. Um, for, Excellent. Yeah, and like John said, though, you need to read which one because there's I think um, nematodes for grubs. There's nematodes I think for fruit flies also. Like they have a few different nematodes right. for different things. Right. So. The one um, thing they don't do is kill nematodes. nematodes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then it's funny, back to um, the conversation about the digging in the lawn, Melinda. And, um, you know, we talked about malorganite. We talked about fertilizers. Sometimes if you apply a fertilizer also, that's going to attract uh, critters as well. Um, you know, things like malorganite, things like organic fertilizers have wonderful smells yeah, to them. <laughs> and, and that attracts critters, uh, especially dogs. I always tell people when I'm putting down fertilizer in their yard, your dog's going to go digging in the plants and sniffing. It's going to last for about three days, and then they're going to go away. But, but malorganite repels some, uh, like deer. Yeah. Deer? And right. uh, So I don't know what the effect is on uh, things like rabbits Raccoons. or dogs, but yeah, I don't know if it would really be an attractant. Yeah. Do you know, Melinda? Yeah, so they do. Um, it's not labeled as a repellent. They do find that... As you mentioned, deer, uh, rabbits, I think it was a uh, university out east, either Rutgers or Cornell, did some research, and it's on the Malorganite site. Dogs do like it. Mm -hmm. um, it won't hurt your dog. They did, you know, do some check. You may have a little bit of a runny, you know, mm -hmm. you may have a little slimy mess to clean up from your dog. <laughs> but like you said, the smell tends to go away, and then it's a little bit better, so you may want to section off your lawn you treat. I have a cat, that an unruly cat in the house, so I'm not a dog person, so please bear with me. I <laughs> like them, but I don't have one, so it's easy for me to say, oh, train them to go in this area and train <laughs> them to do that. But, yeah, as you mentioned, um, the good news is it won't hurt them. Yeah. Yes, dogs seem to like it, so you always want to keep it contained because really the issue, somebody told me they forgot and left theirs in the shed with the door open and the dog got into it and it yeah. didn't hurt the dog it just made a mess for them so yeah good point but yes a lot of the wildlife it does repel you know you always hear stories about how dogs can tell if you're a good person or not like yeah. if you have someone come <laughs> over and the dog growls you know yeah. that might not be a nice person so same thing with the fertilizer if the dog goes after the fertilizer <laughs> it really good. likes it it's yeah. good yeah. it's a good fertilizer yeah. but if There's a marketing uh, plan yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, if you put out some chemical fertilizer a dog's not going to eat that yeah. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have people shop with their dogs at the nursery and they're going to walk down the aisle right? and if they pick out that bag that's the one they should buy that's what your garden is lacking that's right very there. good <laughs> um hey, but melinda you know uh before the break i had asked you about your new garden and you know i was talking about how the soil when i dig up lawns so when you have your new garden now, you know, are you able to kind of change some of the things that you did in the past to make it work better for what you're doing at this moment? And Melinda has acreage, too. So yeah. what was it like before you moved in? <laughs> you know, it was nothing but weeds and grass, which, you know, because 
they had no gardens, and so I've been working in making gardens, and I'm growing a few weeds too. Um, I went from clay soil that I'd mended for 25 years, so it was great soil I left behind in Milwaukee, to sand and rock where I'm at now. And I'm much older and don't have 25 more years to (laughs) wait for good soil. So I've been using, of course, malorganite, but I've been using uh, lasagna gardening techniques and hugel culture techniques to kind of speed up building my soil. Always use organic mulches. The benefit of sandy soil, if you get a lot of rain, you're in good shape. If it's dry, you know, you can always add stuff to sandy soil. But it, it does require more work, and it doesn't hold the nutrients, as you guys know, and it doesn't hold the moisture. And so a lot of my efforts have been trying to build the soil, adding organic matter through different techniques, whether it's mulching the soil. Uh, this fall I hope to do some uh, green cover crops, green manure crops. I'll let mm-hmm. you know every year I say I'm going to do it, and every year I don't get it done. So hopefully this fall I'll get some green manure crops in to build my soil some more. So hey, you're hey, right, real, I real can quick. see the difference. Good uh-huh. growth, but not as ex- not as easy with the sandy soil. Yeah, we're going to take another break, and when we get back, we'll continue talking with Melinda Myers. Yep, hey, and... Uh, uh, Beach has a question. Yeah, Carl has got a question, too, about Milorganite, so we'll do that as well. So, again, questions, comments right there. If you're watching us live on our Facebook page, post those comments, post those questions. Something for Melinda or maybe something later on that we can address that is, uh, that's okay, too. So, going to take a break. I'm Brian Main, John Bagnasco, Tiger Palafox here. Garden America for your Labor Day weekend, 2021. Back after this on BizTalk Radio, Facebook Live. Back to the show, those on BizTalk Radio, this is the final segment of hour number one, which of course means uh, news coming up top of the hour, and then uh, we're back at six minutes after. Those on Facebook Live, we keep on rolling right along because we uh, deal with our own time zone here on Facebook Live. Melinda Myers with us today, and we do have a question, John, as we come right back from the break. Yeah, this is a question I've never had about Malorganite, but Melinda gets these questions all the time, so maybe she has. Uh, Carla in Huntington Beach says that she has some malorganite that water got into, and it's now dry, but it's a hard, solid mass. So she wants to know, is it worth breaking it up for use, or has it been too compromised? You know, what I would do, what I, I would do is I'd add it to my compost pile. And the reason being is, you know, some of those nutrients may have leached out, so it's going to be hard even if you break it up to know how you're spreading it. Um, over a garden or over your lawn but in your compost pile it's a lot more forgiving so I always recommend to people if that happens use that in your compost pile you'll feed those microorganisms that are breaking down you know the raw materials and that way and you're mixing it and creating something different than trying to fertilize your lawn so it's still usable but it's you can't really tell how much you're applying so by using it in your compost pile you won't hurt anything uh, and you wouldn't hurt it on your lawn, but you won't get the results you want. It may be more spotty than you like. And if you don't have a compost pile, it certainly would be uh, better to spread it out than throw it away. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, or if you have trees, you know, you can treat it like a fertilizer spike and dig a little hole and just bury it <laughs> in there. True. Or just get a saw and cut it into spikes. That's a great idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. Because, <laughs> yes, I have had wet milorganite before that turns into a hard mass and i you know break it up with a hammer or something like that and it's still good yeah it's still good but like melinda says it comes out in little chunks not necessarily a fine powder that's easy to spread yeah so i just drop it in my hedges or something and it'll go it'll eventually break down the compost pile though is a fantastic idea Well, uh, I'm left now with two ideas. I'm going to chunk up my malorganite that gets wet and spread it around <laughs> my trees, and I'm buying nematodes for the lawn. So thank you, guys. <laughs> Look at that. You come on our show, and you walk away with I more I learn a info. lot, always. Yeah. Hey, um, you know, you brought up something when you were talking about your um, soil, about sandy draining well, and then you add you add organic material to retain the moisture. Now, in an area where where you know, you live and you guys do have substantial rainfall. Can people add too much organic material where it just retains too much water? You know, it's usually 
the problem is where we have heavy clay soil, and so create increasing that volume to a level where it's a problem is usually not possible. The real problem is if they don't mix it in. So you're right. If you just are piling compost on top and it doesn't have a chance to work in or you don't help it work in, I like to do what's called vertical mulching where you spread your compost you know, a couple inches over the soil surface and then take an auger bit on my drill and then aerate the soil and push it in and run that organic matter into the root zone. It's a great way to revive a perennial garden that's not bad enough to start over, but really not performing like you like. And that's a great way to move some of that organic matter through. We're lucky I don't see that. The bigger problem I see is people trying to amend clay soil with sand, don't add enough, and end up with cement, you know, (laughs) because that's how you make concrete, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. Oh, man. Yeah, that's... You know, it's it's tough when people start, you know, messing with the soil and, you know, they can end up doing sometimes harm. Like, I, I see people, they love dropping their coffee grounds in their oh. potted plants. The next thing you know, they the potted plant has a layer, two-inch layer of coffee grounds in it, and they don't know why the plant's not performing well. And I've seen people since so many coffee shops give it away. I was at a garden one time, and it was this crusty layer that they'd done out in their vegetable garden, exactly the same thing, Mm -hmm. and wondering why things, you know, the the moisture wasn't able to penetrate because it was a nice crusty layer. And coffee grounds are excellent, but they do, they're allelopathic to some plants. And so that's another one that a little is good, too much can be harmful and great for your compost pile. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Oh, wow. So, hey, you did just come from an event that you got to go to in person, right? I did. It was great. Yeah, yeah. Got to talk with people, got to see people face-to-face. Yeah, you bet. So it was a sustainability fair, which was excellent, and a little bit, and another one was on fall color. And so the sustainability fair was Uh, excellent because they had speakers on keeping bees which i've done for a few years took a break i need to learn more on my list Uh, raising chickens and i was thinking of you tiger because Mm -hmm. the lady i talked about who rents out chickens was there and she rents out a coop and the chickens and she'll take them back in the winter or she'll advise you and help you along the way and i thought wow I have a neighbor that raises chickens, so I don't need chickens. But I thought, (laughs) for somebody who wants to try, what a great way. You know, maybe, you know, I think that's what community gardens allow people to that want to start a vegetable gardener. I love container planters for that reason. It's a good way to try on a small scale and then fix, you know, oh, it's not working quite well. So, you know, maybe we'll try to adapt before we expand to bigger gardens or do more than we can handle. There you go. All right. Well, hey, Melinda, lots of great info as always. Thank you very much for joining us this week. And have so are you taking Monday off? Um, I'm going to work in my own garden. Oh, so, yeah, I guess I go. am taking Monday off. It'll Perfect. be a fun day. And, uh, you know, it's a great weekend. And for people who are reviving their lawns, it's a great time to overseed if you've got some dead spots and, and a good time to aerate before overseeding. So some things we can do besides fertilizing to keep our lawns looking their best. Yeah, and I'm sure those tips are also on your website, melindamyers.com. You bet. All right. Yep. Thank you very much, Melinda. Have a great weekend. You guys have a great holiday weekend. Thanks so much. You bet. Take care. Melinda Myers. And she learned and we learned. I wonder wonder if she has a riding lawnmower. I should have asked her because of all of her acres and if she, you know, mows it. Because I I think it would be fun to have a riding lawnmower and just be able to go out for an hour and just – Mow it's your meadow. Something we don't see too too many of no. in not, Southern not here, California. Not in the city. But yeah. uh, I think the riding lawnmower capital of the or state anyway that has the most riding lawnmowers is Texas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, yeah. miles got, and miles of Texas. Yeah, yeah, huge lawns. But when we lived in Michigan, we had a riding lawnmower. How many? Just what an was acre. Your one acre, but it yeah. was like probably all grass. It was. <laughs> like, I mean, there were trees in it, but no, but yeah. but. but we, the majority of the acre of the I mean, property was grass. What yeah. are you on right now? What's your acreage? Uh, three and a half now. Right, and I mean no grass. I, I, no grass. I, you you just built your house, and you right. say you are putting in a lawn. Right, but it definitely won't be one acre of lawn. We no. got to go to a break. Uh, those on Biz Talk Radio. That's it for our number one.
News coming up top of the hour, six minutes after we come back with hour number two. And for the rest of us on Facebook Live, we're going to come right back in just a very few moments. So if you have any questions, comments, uh, now's the time to post it. Maybe something Melinda said or something looking ahead that we can help you with here on Garden America. John Bagnasco, Tiger Palafox, I'm Brian Maine. Again, quick break, messages on Biz Talk Radio, back on Facebook Live after these. Coming up next, and when I say these, I'm talking about our friends, our commercials, who support the show. Stay with us. We welcome you to our number two on uh, Biz Talk Radio, our pre-recorded show from last week, Labor Day weekend. Those on Facebook Live, we thank you for tuning in as we continue. And again, uh, what's on your mind? Questions, comments as uh, we continue. And uh, I guess, yeah, preparing for what will soon be autumn, fall, winter before you know it. And here in San Diego, though, we've got another couple of months of hot weather. I think we got not even three weeks till the autumnal equinox. <laughs> autumnal equinox yeah. and that would be the shortest day no not the shortest day of the year the, that's the winter solstice yeah we're going yeah. from uh, yeah. summer into to autumn right that, that so little it's equal equal yeah the equal equal right. equinox right exactly <laughs> happens twice a year in the twice spring, a year spring and fall except the one time back in 1960 when it happened once they, well they that's still... when the earth was turning the opposite direction that's back right then. yeah still a phenomenon <laughs> look at tiger's like really that did that happen i didn't read no. about that no, no. How how are the, how are your uh, how's your offspring out in the hallway? Yeah, this morning? they're doing well. They keep it busy on their tablets and little games. Boy, thank goodness for tablets and phones and technology. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. You know, just, uh, just keeps them quiet out there. Let, yeah. let them go. Yeah. You know, I have uh, all my roses are still in containers, right? Right. And I'm getting ready to put in the irrigation and start planting some. But there's one rose that whenever I pass by because it's got the label sticking in it, it reminds me of Isaac. Really? Yeah, because it's, <laughs> it's called Little Tiger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a fun one. I think it was funny this morning when we guys came into the lobby. He goes, well, yeah. I haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> Good to see you, Isaac. Yeah, <laughs> haven't well, seen you in a while either, bud. Yeah. <laughs> what, are the, what are those things that, that uh, Tasha is wearing on her feet? Oh, they're like yep. bear claws. Bear claws slippers. or dinosaur claws yeah, or something. something. Yeah, big old, big old claw slippers. Are they like slippers, big old yeah. slippers? Yeah. Hey, you know... Um, Plumeria this time of year. Oh my yeah. gosh, going crazy! They do are huge. You, yours are blooming, right? Oh my, I mean, it's again. We talk about how you fast... kind of think. You know, some plants come into bloom and then they bloom like a week, two weeks, and that's it. Yeah. But the plumeria, the hotter it is, as long as they're getting that. water during the summer, they just keep on growing. Yeah, they, they, it's, it's amazing how fast and how quick. And I, I, the weather's got a lot to do with it, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. My. What is it? Lord Byron has yep. not bloomed yet because no. it was little when I got it. Not as big as the one you had. Mine's budded at this moment. Is it? Yeah. 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 It didn't bloom last year for me, though. Really? Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe the fertilizer. You didn't, didn't use the fertilizer you told me to use. Well, no. I, I don't know if I used, like, you know, because if you only do it once, sometimes, you know, maybe it it. Yeah, it never really out. needs it every two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. If you're using that water soluble. But, um, and then... I have this other one, which is called Maltese, which is kind of a red and white flower, and it's not even budded at all. And so I'm like, oh, I'm bummed if that one doesn't bloom this year. What about the cuttings I gave you? Have they rooted yet, or is it um, too hard, too early to tell? They're too early to tell, um, but they are putting out new growth. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. So, so I don't think that they're rooted yet. Mm -hmm. Because you know how plumerias will just they'll put, put out, out new, new growth, growth, even flower, and, stick. and then fall over because yeah. they're rotted. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, I don't know if they're, but they are putting out new growth. But yeah, I don't think they're rooted yet. You know, my son and his daughter are moving to Indiana. Indianapolis. Wants me. Remember that song? <laughs> Lord, I can't go back there. I do remember that song. Yeah, see, but uh, um, Michelle, my daughter-in-law, was asking me if. She she has this plumeria that 
Uh, when she used to live in an apartment, she's had it all oh, these years. So it's one. like mm-hmm. 20 years old or something. You know what? I she say said, can I bring that back with me? <laughs> <laughs> you can bring it back, but yeah. you can't leave it outdoors. No. You've got to bring it in in the winter. Yeah, you know, they're going to discover a whole different way of doing things. Well, you well, know, the thing I was thinking of for Plumeria back there is that they go dormant in the winter anyway, right? right? So if you just bring it in the house and leave it alone. It'll be fine. It should be okay. You, you put it out in late May. And you get it gets to be outside June, July, August, September, and then probably October is probably John Ha when you probably want to think about bringing it back in. October, November is when you want to probably think about bringing it back in because if if it gets frosted, well, they get frosted. They get. I, we should ask Melinda when her frost first frost date is. Yeah. But sometimes they'll get a frosty end of September. And that's what I'm saying. If it gets frosted, they die. Yeah. Like, that's the hard. That's the. They don't just get. They turn to they mush. Don't, they don't just get like frost and like a, a part of it dies like some plants it's the whole thing dies with one frost so you, gotta you know be careful. I, I just it's amazing how our attitude about growing and gardening here is so much different <laughs> we don't have the maintenance taking it in the winter time yeah. doing this doing that yeah, but we also don't get a rest you know they get like <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're growing they're, seasons like three months. No, in <laughs> November, November months they're cruising through catalogs the whole yeah, time. Yeah, but do you yeah. really want to rest? I don't know. I kind of like year round. It's so ex- spring is <laughs> so exciting back there. Because I guess everything the le- trees I, start to bud awakening. out, flowers come up. Yeah, it's like kind of like what they call baseball season, spring training. Yeah, exactly. Ah. Can you imagine if baseball was twelve All months year. a year? That's true. Yeah. It's hard enough with 162 games. Oh, especially <laughs> if you're a, a Padres fan. What, what you got, John? <laughs> well, Sue um, Sue has a comment here on Facebook, and I'm kind of wondering if she's at my house. <laughs> <laughs> because she says, we're at a bed and breakfast in Temecula, and they raise chickens for fresh eggs. The menagerie includes Polish and silky chickens. Mm-hmm. and um, So cute and exotic looking. Right. And she loves Melinda Myers too. She does love Melinda Myers. That was a nice comment. Ever, who doesn't love Melinda yeah. Myers? But anyway, those are the kinds of chickens I have also, and we have fresh eggs and. Oh wait! Now, wait. I didn't know you have chickens. Yeah. Well, Remember we talking about the roosters that got eaten by owls. They came along with the chickens. Oh, so okay, yeah. gotcha. There's it's the actually connection. Joe and Michelle. Yeah. Well, that's what okay. Take care right. of the chickens. All right. They're on my property. I just don't have to take care of them unless they're on vacation or they go so, somewhere. The chickens go on vacation. <laughs> so, um, so we have chickens at the nursery, as I've said. Oh, before. I know that. That's the first thing and, I do when I get and to it's your funny nursery. Funny because we sell them, and then we get new ones, and we sell them. And sometimes, sometimes the staff wants to keep them because they don't want to keep them as pets. Mm-hmm. And I'm just, we can get new ones. Like, no, we will sell them. So it's funny. We were just having a manager's meeting about the chickens, and they were like tom- commenting a chicken on how meeting on how they wanted to keep these particular two for the future and keep them at the nursery. And I was, I was like, no, <laughs> like they could be sold. That day, somebody came in and they sold them. I was like, I see. You know, I never even thought of that because we had to get rid of chickens. I should have just given them. To yeah, you, you right? should. You should. Yeah, we. I think we're down to like that. three right now. Look what well, roosters. Did. Don't give us any roosters. Well, we made the mistake of, of um, well, we got rid of, I think it was six hens. Oh, wow. But, it's you know, when bit... you first get chickens, the very first thing you want to do after they grow up is hatch little chicks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Michelle uh, had this one chicken sitting on 10 eggs. Oh, goodness. So oh. we already had seven chickens, then another Jeez. 10 is 17, and it's just too many. Yeah, uh, they. My son had planned on expanding the coop uh, until they decided to move. Yeah, it's like, do I expand the coop or should we just move? <laughs> it's going to be a, kind of an awakening for them living back there in so many different ways, in terms of gardening and just the weather and just the way things are. Life, Life in general. Yeah, yes. look at look I at. Get, go ahead. You know what they experienced this week. You know, and I get it. You know, Melinda was in an area that was not affected, but right. nonetheless, there are times a year, and there are times that they are affected by these major mm-hmm. storms, tremendous weather events, whether it's a polar vortex or a hurricane or, you know, all that stuff that, yeah, it's it's different than here. They said that more people lost their lives up north toward the New York area than yeah. down south where, where the Hurricane Ida first came well, through. It's kind of like if a storm hit here, and, and this is my theory behind it because it seemed like a lot of the flood things that happened were 
where it was not normal. If we got hit by 10 inches of rainfall in oh, a day, it'd be devastating. We, it would be devastating because we're our, our infrastructure is just not ready. And I'll for tell that. you right now, Mission Valley would be flooded. Oh yeah, and I mean flooded. Yeah, there used to be a theater down there, the Cinema Twenty One. And even with moderate rain, that parking lot would fill up and fill it would up. go into the theater. Yeah. So ten inches would be that would be, yeah. Yeah. Headline so, news. So it wouldn't. It you know, and that's what I think happened is you know down south they're ready they, for it. They're ready for it. They yeah. have the river system. They have the drainage system. They're you know they levees, get rainfall. The levees. Yeah. And they've yeah. got warning. Yes. Yeah. You right. know, I don't think New York was expecting, expecting. that much rain. Yeah. yeah. They they knew that they were getting rain, but maybe not that much. We're going to take a break. See, John's going to talk, and we're going to take a break first because we don't want to cut you off. All right, then right? I'll wait. We got some emails <laughs> Remember, this wait. week that said, please don't cut John off. I know you have to go to a break. <laughs> I'm being very cognizant of that. So those on uh, Facebook Live, what's going on? Questions, comments, we're going to come back. John has some really interesting things to say that could change not just your Labor Day weekend, but the rest of your life here on Garden America. And here we are again. Uh, thank you for tuning in, uh, Biz Talk Radio, Facebook Live. Those on Facebook Live, I'm sure, watch us during the break when it's quiet and there's no audio and we're chit-chatting and they want to know what we're talking about. And John always says, none of your business. <laughs> Just kidding. We love having you. You can, you can watch us anytime whether the audio is on or That's not. Right. But prior to the break, John was getting ready to uh, tell us something very interesting. Well, I don't know if it'll change the rest of your life, Brian, but well, I was going to mention that there's – there's particular trees that we can't grow in Southern California. And I gave my son a list and I said, you know, when you get back there, see if you can find these trees and plant them. Because they're trees I've always wanted to see and really don't have much experience with. One is uh, a Davidia, the handkerchief tree. Mm, don't know that one. Uh, don't know some, that one. Sometimes called the dove tree, too, that has flowers with white bracts that look like you put a bunch of handkerchiefs really? in, in a tree. And um, that's is... one. The other is the paper bark maple, oh, yeah. which I yeah, really like, well Acer Grecium. And the, what was the third one? <laughs> I'll have to think about that. So you that. want to see if they can be successful back there well, with they those will. trees? Well, they will. They'll grow back there. Yeah. They just won't grow here. So the only thing we can grow here maple-wise is the Japanese maple? Because you said maple trees won't do well here at all, right? Maples right. in general, yeah. In general, and even yeah. Japanese maples yeah, don't do well here. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no maple at all here. My son said he's he's looking forward to planting some Japanese ma maples there because he wants to see them leaf out and not turn brown by <laughs> <Not laughs> right. midsummer. Yeah. And actually right. live. Yeah. Yeah. And get larger. Yeah, they get they get large there. You know, they you know, some of the varieties. You know, because of that poor growth here, the oh, trees yeah, kind of stay Oh, yeah, you can get like 10 compact, feet tall. But there's you know, so many different varieties yeah. of Japanese maple. You've got tall growing dwarfs, et cetera. And, and, you know, that's one of those trees as well. We had mentioned this before. I can't remember which show we were talking about how, you know, the landscape, you know, if you just have green trees, it's just a backdrop of green foliage. But you can throw trees into that mix, and Japanese maple is one that you can find – with a burgundy foliage, you can find it with a yellow foliage. You can find it with a deep green, a lime green. Um, you know, lots of different mm -hmm. 
colors that add to the landscape, add to that backdrop. And it's not just during the fall because most trees turn different colors in the fall. But right. no, this is a tree that has that foliage year round. And see, that that's exactly the kind Bird. of tree somebody would want. Hey, yes. I'm looking for a tree that grows all year round, that gets no higher than 10 feet. And <laughs> like, remember like last week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but that, and what was the name of that tree again? Which one? The one that we talked about last no, week? No, the one you're just talking about. Japanese the, maple? The Japanese maple yeah. that goes all year. No, they don't go all year, but, you know, through the... But they're viable, I mean, to some degree? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and even then, their foliage, you know, sometimes they have green stems, red stems. So the structure of the tree is even unique um, as well with the foliage itself. So fun, definitely, you know, envious of people that grow great Japanese maples. Right. Again, uh, those on Facebook Live, uh, we've got a, a question uh, from Karen, anybody else that wants to chime in? Do you want to try to tackle that question? Yeah. Uh, from Karen, or you want to ask it? Well, yeah. It's um, she's under attack. She bought two. Be dangerous to you in spreading. Yeah. It. In other words, if she's around it, I guess she's asking. Yeah. What? What? Is it? Is it? In other, I guess is it dangerous to spread or for human contact? Yeah. So, I'm guessing. So yes, that one is a. It's an insecticide, so it's a chemical. Right. Um. You know. So you know, everybody's different, but it is also one that's sold across the the world right right you know so i mean you know you want to follow the instructions what was it that bruce used to say the label is the, the label law. is the law you know so you know follow the instructions um you know be careful if you have dogs or cats and you know kids yeah. and things like that you know once once the product's down and if it's the liquid one it's dry it's usually not of an effect um it's when it's you a, first apply it yeah it's if it's the pelletized one um you know, there's a period of time that they tell you to wait to, you know, work in the area or, or, or do anything like that. So follow those instructions. Um, you know, it's a broad spectrum insecticide. So it's going to kill a lot of different things, not just the, you know, if you were to work with spinosad or neem oil. And right, right. So those are more, you know, specific or, you know, not as um, aggressive. So hope that answers your question, Karen. Yeah. Thank you. And Karen, by the way, is our uh, official cat clipper groomer. Oh, really? Yeah, in Pacific Beach. Oh. The exotic pooch. How about Ooh. that for a little shout-out? Yeah, the exotic pooch. Yeah. Did you miss me? <laughs> yeah, well, you know what was funny was watching the video and that close-up of where John is, you just see this empty chair with a microphone, <laughs> and it looks so sad. Yeah. It looks so sad. We, just, we should put a picture of him. We should get a cutout. Yeah. I see that, well, we were talking about bringing the senior pictures in. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, there you Can go. Can leave and just put one. our pictures there. Yeah. Hey, um... Karen asked uh, if that uh, insecticide would be dangerous yeah, for Yeah, we were just yeah. talking about that. What do you have to add to <clears> Well, that? I was just going to add, did you mention that you should wear protective gear when you spray any Yeah, we didn't, chemicals? but that, that's a good idea, yeah. just to be on the you safe know, side, to wear uh, something, Karen. Just those safety goggles. And, yeah, absolutely. And they've got the... Uh, you know what? I wear my glasses when I'm out and about, and the reason I do is because so many times I've bent over or turned, and there's a bush or a plant. Poke and I get you. poked in the eye, and yeah. it's just a good idea just when I'm out there to put something over my yeah, eyes. Yeah, I've been over and got poked with a rose cane. Oh, oh, right. I know. And it's right like, in the eye. It's just, yeah, so whatever, yeah, put something protective on. Yeah. But goggles, and, glasses. You know, and then to expand on what John's saying, the early, early morning, you know, or late, late evening for applying these is always good because, as John mentioned, something protective People don't realize drift, which is when you spray something and yep. then the wind blows. Sure, it. right. Because usually when you're spraying something, it's kind of a finer mist, and then it becomes an even finer mist with drift when the wind moves it. Mm -hmm. And, you, you know, like you say, you get it on your skin or you can get it in your eyes or inhale it, and you might not have effects for an hour or two after you did. And you're like, why Why do I have this rash on my skin? Yeah. I don't understand why. am why. I sick? Why do I feel yeah. sick? Yeah, yeah so. if you're worried about inhaling COVID, that's <laughs> yeah. nowhere near as likely as inhaling uh, yeah. chemical sprays. Absolutely, yeah, uh, absolutely. Karen mentions that she was spraying for ants or wanted to get rid of ants. Uh huh. And uh, I think that um, taro is one of the, the best. best things yeah. to use for ants because um, they take it back to the nest, it, right, John? It, and that, or do they not? Well, the granular one, I don't know if they do. All I know is it does a good job of getting rid of them, but one, it lasts a long time. And one of the nice things about it is that it's not organic, but it's a synthetic organic. So it's an uh, organic uh, ke chemical that's synthesized. Right. Um, anyway, it's relatively safe. 
uh, but extremely effective. I just bought some the other day as I'm cleaning up my roses and repotting some. I find little ant nests that have been made in the bottom of a yeah. lot of the pots, and so I just sprinkle that around, and, and they're gone. Okay, we're going to take a break and uh, come back. We have two more segments, uh, one uh, longer than the other. Not that anybody cares, but just to give you an idea of where we are time-wise. And those on BizTalk Radio, appreciate you uh, tuning into this program. Facebook Live, of course, questions, comments. Tiger Palafox, John Bagnesco, I'm Brian Maine. Again, a quick break. Back after these messages on BizTalk Radio on Garden America. We are with you on Garden America every weekend, and today being a Labor Day weekend, nice long weekend. We appreciate you starting off that long Labor Day weekend uh, with us here on Garden America. Whatever's on your mind, uh, Facebook uh, Live. You know who we haven't seen on Facebook this morning? At least I haven't, is Rick. Oh, yeah. And Rick is always a regular yeah. on Facebook Live. So what's happening? Let us know. Effects on birds. I'd use something else. Yes, tarot works. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. Tarot with a follow-up. You know, the tarot does birds. work, but tarot is, uh, can be harmful to birds, too. So you yeah. would want to keep it out of water areas or uh, bird bath areas or in, anywhere where you put seed. But if you're sprinkling it in the lawn, it goes down uh, at a rate that probably won't harm the birds. You know, speaking of harming birds, with our fountain in the back, I, yeah. I deal with algae all the time. And I just take a Mr. Clean... Sponge, yeah, you were wipe, saying that. You really, and it works really good. Now, somebody else said if you want to keep the algae out of there totally, you can put one of those things you drop into your toilet that keeps it clean. Yeah. That, that works very well. But it's, it's, a, it's a chemical bleach, yeah. and I don't want the birds to get hurt. Yeah. The other stuff that I purchased is supposed to keep the algae out. It doesn't harm birds. It doesn't, it doesn't It doesn't work. work. It doesn't work yeah. at all. <laughs> That's you know why what? it doesn't hurt the birds. I, I just put up with the green algae. It's no yeah. big deal. And then wipe it in a couple you, of weeks. I wonder if you cut a Mr. Clean and just put a little piece of the sponge in there once a week or once every few weeks, if that would keep it. Well, keep that's, it going, but not. That's bleach, too, though. Well, I know, but it's not a lot is what I'm saying. It's yeah. like you just put know. a little bit. Because that's the thing. People do ask me that, and I do say you can use bleach and you can use chlorine. But you just don't want to put them in at such a large volume that it would be something where it could mm -hmm. be harmful. So, mm -hmm. so I mean, there's chlorine and stuff in our tap water. Yeah. But it's yeah. just at such a small number. Well, these birds use this all the time to, to, to bathe. It's amazing. They just come on several of them at one time. Yeah. Fountain's Kathy and Neelan says use peroxide. Oh, hydrogen peroxide? Oh, really? Yeah. There you go. You just solved my problem. Yeah. Because, again, I've kind of let the algae go for a few weeks. Like, what, Whatever. But uh, I'll, I'll do that. I'll get the Mr. Clean, wipe it down, and put the. Now we don't know how much. I guess maybe yeah, I'm sure a couple of probably, capfuls. Yeah, exactly. And then you Thank probably you, have to reapply it a couple, of, you know, once a month, once every few weeks. You know, hydrogen peroxide. That's got to be the miracle of miracles. You can drink <laughs> it. You can clean with it. You can, you can <laughs> fertilize your plants with what it. What doesn't yeah. it do? Right. What hey, is it, by the way? Uh, you mentioned. Uh, Rick not commenting, and uh, uh -oh. Carla says, yeah, she says, I wanted to tell Rick how great his tomato photo is in the newsletter. Hey, that's oh, right, yeah. one of those photos. Hey, you too can have your pictures uh, in the newsletter. Yeah. You can be a published photographer. Send them to john at gardenamerica.com, and uh, we can all look at what's happening in your fabulous gardens. Love to see what's happening. To can always use photos. Yeah, we need photos. We don't get as many since I started charging five dollars for each submission. Though. <laughs> and you know, people, you can. Wait a minute, where's that money going? <laughs> you can post your pictures on our Facebook page too. Yeah, nothing precludes you from taking a picture and putting it on our Facebook page. Oh, really? Very easy to do. Right, it's opening a whole new can of worms. It is, and it's a good can of worms. Let's see who's going to be the first one to upload a picture to our Facebook page this week or today. Yeah, we'll be looking for it. <laughs> Carolyn, thanks for the uh, peroxide hit. Yeah, that's a absolutely. That's great. See if that works. Uh, hydrogen peroxide's good to use uh, on indoor plants too, or plants that you might have a tendency to overwater, because it adds oxygen to the roots. What was the the fertilizer that used to be out that had oxygen? Oxygen plus. Yeah, right? oxygen, oxygen plus. plus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that yeah. was uh, I think urea oxide i'm not sure 
Uh, but anyway, the same type of thing as it breaks down, it would add oxygen to the roots. Somebody else says vinegar. Puts it in, in, their, the... in their chicken's water. Well, there you go. Yeah, See, you this is great. You know, we have very smart viewers and listeners. Have you ever had drinking vinegar? I've heard of drinking vinegar. You're suppo- yeah. It's supposed to be very good for you. Well, it's supposed to be very good for you, but they make it in weird flavors like celery. Well, they try to disguise raspberry, it, Raspberry, right? and then they mix it into drinks and things. Yeah. Those I were thought- called shrubs. Yes, Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I thought it was interesting. And when we were in Portland, that's where I was first introduced to it. And I asked, I'm like, well, which which one do you recommend? And they said the celery one. And I'm like, that sounds horrible. But if that's what you recommend, I guess is what I'm drinking. And it was actually pretty good. Hmm. It was a drinking vinegar that was celery. Flavored. We did a show on shrubs once. Do you remember yes, that? Long time ago. Right. And I think we even brought some in the studio. Yeah, we did. There was uh, uh, my business partner, uh, Alice, up in Oregon, Oregon Cottage Groves, uh, made and brought when she visited, I think it was like, or I guess we were at a trade show. It was probably 30 different shrubs. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they make them all different flavors. Right. And sweet and sour, spicy. And, and they're made out of things. vinegar. Yeah. And they were something that the in colonial times, when people were working out in the fields, mm-hmm. they would use as a refreshing drink because, oh. you know, yeah, they, they didn't, didn't have, have Gatorade bo- or bottled water. <laughs> <laughs> not, not just a drink, but a refreshing drink. Yeah. yeah exactly. Well, the nice thing about the shrubs is that because of the vinegar, they went in turn, uh, I was going to say rancid, but I guess yeah. it already are. <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, they, they do put things in there that you would never think of, you know, like beets. Yes, yeah. And and stuff like that. And you can find a lot of recipes for uh, drinking shrubs online. So if you want to turn your fountain into a drink fountain, you have your vinegar, you, you know, you mix the it up in there. Right in there. You just, just go ahead and dip a ladle in the fountain. <laughs> yeah, well, the birds are loving it. So And I like we like that. That's fine. We've got the hummingbird feeder right above it. But they love to go in and take that bath. Yeah. And big birds, too, coming by. <laughs> yeah, I mean, big birds. Oh, that's funny. Not the crows yet. The crows yeah. are around. Well, the little birds will keep the crows at, at bay. At bay? Yeah. Oh, man. You know what I always have in my uh, bird bath is red-headed woodpeckers. Really? Yeah. Oh, man. I don't think I... Uh, it, in, I love woodpeckers. They fascinate me. Yeah, the 30 years that we lived in Fallbrook, I don't think I ever saw a woodpecker. And now? And now they're there every single day. Wow. And Why do you funny. suppose that is, John? What's what's What has happened to the environment? Where he's at. Is it just because of you've changed locations? Yeah. You're more you're more out there now than you right. were before. Yeah, more of a, and there's a, a wooded area down yeah. at the base of my property yeah. and a river down there. You're not quite to the Thule's, but you're close. <laughs> I'm on the borderline, yeah. yeah. I would say he's in the Tulis. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, he is. A, I'm a city. I'm a city boy, and yeah. I know uh, the first time we drove out there with Tiger, it's like, where are we going? And then this bro dirt. All of a sudden, yeah. you turn a corner, and there it is. Yeah. I was telling Brian, I I beat Tiger to the studio today, <laughs> and I said that's been a goal of mine, and and I said I found out that if I took an earlier train, an I earlier could be here. <laughs> oh. So great hints. I can't wait to go home and clean the, the fountain and, and pour some peroxide in there, maybe some vinegar, and then let the sun do its thing. Don't you have those sucker fish in your fish tank? Just drop one of those in I there. Do. I've got I've got a Pletco and two cats. <laughs> and they're doing it. John like, saw the aquarium for the first time about a month ago. Very well, clear. It's awesome, yeah. yeah. Very clear. Yeah. Well, UV <laughs> lights. You know that? There's there's a yeah. UV UV a pump filter. system. Uh-huh. Yeah. Now I think in Southern California, you can have Placostomus outside, right? The, I don't see fish. why you wouldn't be able to. They get they get large. They're, yeah, they're very well, I'm thinking well, of the temperatures or, because oh. um, most tropical fish need need warmer certain, temperatures. Well, yeah, well, my water's yeah. in the 70s. Yeah, and if you're outdoors in Southern California, the water's going to be in the 40s. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. He does yeah. a good job though. Keeps that glass clean. <laughs> he does. Good. Or but does it, keep. See him working. Look at that. He's yeah, on the none clock. Of, none of the other fish are working. No, they're eating, looking yeah. for something to eat. Yeah. But he's doing his job. Uh, what's the place in Fallbrook that used to be called Daylily Hill? They changed the name. Um, Waterwise? Yeah. Waterwise yeah. Botanicals, yeah. right? Yep. They have a pond out there. Oh, yeah. And they have, they have channel catfish in it. 
I think I remember hearing that. Yeah, yeah there are these huge. Yeah, and you know what? They're not catfish. always the best tempered either. Those catfish. Is that those ones that you put your arm in there? The and people. You try to that's how they fish from. They them reach out. in there and they bite your arm. And oh, you just yeah. pull them out. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, that's very popular down don't, south. Don't get me wrong. If I had the opportunity to do it with some people, you would? I would. Why not? I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't want to stick my hand in something dark, and I don't know what's in there. I, you know, I like to kind of people see well, what I'm that's doing. What I'm saying, if I'm, I'm with people that know what they're doing, I, I'm not just going to go and stick my hand in some random hey, tiger, dark. Here, do this. Yeah, just stick your hand in this dark area. And here, you don't tiger, know what's pull in my there. finger. One of those guys. <laughs> hey, we're going to take a. Yeah, we can. Because we're too. Or we got, we're about thirty seconds short oh, of taking a break goodness. here. Pull my finger. But uh, hey, what's uh, let's see here. Okay, just making sure we're we're good on questions and comments here. Yeah. But I think now we're close enough to take a break. All right. As we have to stay on time for Biz Talk Radio. Good job. When we come back, you going to add something to the show, John? I think I'd talk some gardening when we come back. We're going to talk, we're going to, yeah, we're going to spin things in a different direction and talk gardening. So this is uh, your Labor Day weekend here, Biz Talk Radio. This is last week's show, but thank you for tuning in. Facebook Live and Biz Talk Radio. We're going to take a break and come back with, uh, golly gee, one more segment on your Labor Day weekend here on Garden America. It is our final segment, so thank you for hanging in there. Those that uh, tune, tune in and out, I should say, we appreciate that. And those that uh, hang in there for the entire show, thank you on BizTalk Radio and Facebook Live. Been talking about a lot of things. John wants to go from catfishing to talking gardening. Well, we'll bring um, Carla into the conversation. I harvested beets this week and was disappointed to see they were just little gnarled balls, even on the roots. Nematodes, question mark, planted next to last season's tomatoes and beets in the same place as last season. Greens were good, though. Um, yeah, usually that is nematode damage. Is yeah, the gnarled not... balls yeah, yeah, exactly. on our root systems is, is definitely a, uh, a sign of nematodes. And so, yeah, I mean, then you talk about you planted them in the same place that you had tomatoes in years past and beets. Um, so, you know... As they say, you know, try not to plant these uh, same plants in the same spot year after year for that reason. Um, and if you give it a year, John, does that kind of get rid of it? Like you leave the bed without planting it for a year? Is that well, what you they know, say? We talked about increasing the amount of nematobacters in the soil, mm -hmm. which would be the bacteria that would kill the nematodes. And... Um, we talked about how malorganite over a long period of time would do that, but what does it very quickly is biosol. Mm. So if you plant your beets in that same area again, make sure that you sprinkle biosol over that area, maybe the season before. Yeah, I was going to say, even wouldn't it be har harmful to do it even beforehand because the biosol is just going to break down and be in the soil, and it's right. going to stay there it's not going to wash away and even if there's no plants there it's still going to be fine so right and the the nematobacters are just going to be eating yep. the nematodes so yeah that's good so yeah that that's a tough thing because again we go back to you don't even see these nematodes you don't even see it but you do see the damage right. when it's done but you can't tell like if you were to just dig in your soil you can't tell that they're there which is uh, the hard part about it there was a vineyard up in napa that I forget how many acres it was, but they were going to have to close down the whole vineyard because uh, all the grapes were infested with nematodes. Oh man! Oh, man. And they spread uh, biosol over the all the acreage, and within the first year, eighty percent of the nematodes were gone. Nice. And the owner of the vineyard said, you know, he expected by the following year they'd virtually all be gone. Biosol. Biosol. Hey. Um, I don't know if uh, Dana watches BritBox. Does she? Well, her sister does, big time. Does she? Yes. Uh, then she's probably watched this series. I think it uh, was like 2003 to 2006, something like that. It was called Rosemary and Time. And Rosemary and Time are two gardener detectives. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. The and they, detective. they solve, they solve uh, mysteries and crimes, but the, the show's all gardening-based because that's their business. So if you have BritBox, 
uh, check out Rosemary in Time. From about, about 2003? Right. Cool. Having a good time out there in the hallway, huh? I know. Yeah. So, Can you hear that? Well, for two, you know, close to two hours is pretty good. Now it's like, okay, what about... Yeah. For the listeners that don't know what we're talking about, my kids are with me today, and they're in the hallway playing and goofing around, and we can hear them, but yeah, think, well, they can't I, hear they them. They can't hear them. But they've been, you know, for close to two hours, not bad. Yeah, getting a little antsy now. Yeah, I'm sure. What's on your up. What's on your agenda for the rest of the day? After this, I have to drive up to Temecula to go check on a um, landscape install that's happening today. Um, so it's going to be hot as I get up there. It was yeah. 101 oh, it'll be- yesterday when I got up there, and it was only 75 in San Diego. Well, even Fallbrook, which is right next to Temecula, right? The high yesterday was 86. Oh, God. So Temecula was 20 degrees And it's crazy. Higher. It's a brand-new build home. And you kind of never know what you're going to get with the soil in a brand-new build home because they you know, scrape the lots or they bring in soil or whatever it may be. So I saw this lot, and I'm like, oh, it, I don't think it's going to be that hard to work with. So I got the trencher for the irrigation lines, and I started running it through the areas. It is hard, rock, hard, hard, rock, so hard. A trencher can't even like penetrate the top of the soil to dig these trenches. Right, and it, and then I would ran into situations where That's there was like a boulder. Instead of DG, you just have G. G. Yeah, <laughs> just, just solid yeah, granite. Just granite. I think they just I think they carved this out of a mountain to put a house on. <laughs> well, we were digging the trenches for the um, irrigation in my house and my son was running the trencher and he said you know usually this is just like cutting through butter yeah he said and uh, you know he the trencher kept stalling, stalling. and God. hitting things yeah. so what are they what's yeah. what's oh we got to solve that problem no we got through it i mean some areas we're gonna have to do by hand and that's what they're doing today cleaning up some areas that the trencher couldn't get through um, but you know, we got through it. it. It was, it just took longer than what I expected and you know, it'll be okay. But yeah. And putting in a lawn and a beautiful garden with trees and everything. So, I well, if you have extra fun. time, stop by and give me some <laughs> landscape ideas. Yeah. I'll give you guys a drink. There you go. Yeah. But, so you're, you're, uh, you, you said you planted a cypress, right? The cashmere one. Cashmere cypress. That mm-hmm. was the only tree that I planted. A- anything else in the offing? All my trees were grown from seed, right? So I was just thinking that I need to move them up into larger pots, but uh, today's not going to be the day to do that. Mm-mm. It's just going to be too hot. I'll just be watering. You're going to be just... watering roses all day. Yeah, which is something I do every day. That'll hey, be. John... We're, get, we're getting there. Not quite time to end the show, Tiger, but still time for a question a for John then. Question so for had, John as we wrap up the I show. I had those dahlias that I ordered, and mm-hmm. they've done well. They're starting to get summer look. Right. Get. Now, are those one of those bulbs that I should let fully go dormant, or can I cut them back now? You know what I mean? Because some bulbs you have to let go dormant right. for them to kind and of And they're like, not bulbs. They're tubers. Well, tubers, yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's not the same thing as a bulb. Okay. It doesn't have to build up that reserve for the following year, but it's probably better for the root system to if you just let it go. Just let it go. Right. Okay. Okay, there you go. That was the last question of the day. Not by a Facebook viewer, but by (laughs) Tiger Palafox. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of your three-day weekend if you get to celebrate three days off to do whatever you want to do. Relax or do something with the family. Get out in the garden. I know we'll be doing a lot of that. So for the entire crew, and again, I want to thank uh, Travis and Ryan back at the uh, network at BizTalk Radio. Thank you for keeping our show on the air. For John Bagnasco, Tiger Palafox, I'm Brian Maine. Enjoy, and we'll see you again next week right here. Facebook Live, BizTalk Radio on the Garden America Show. Take care.